Hi and welcome to this series where I'm going through the ITIL4 practices individually and I'll be giving you the main headline points you should be aware of in order to help you support your base knowledge around ITIL4. I'll also discuss some of my real world application of these practices in various organisations I've worked in. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like and click the bell, you'll get those updates. Okay, so let's get to it. Today I'm going to be talking about infrastructure and platform management, which is from the technical management practices. There's three technical management practices in ITIL 4. Uh, you've got your deployment management, your infrastructure and platform management, which is what we're going to be talking about, and the software development management. Quick reminder, what's a practice? It's a set of organisational resources designed for performing work or accomplishing an objective. So the ITIL 4 book talks around the purpose of infrastructure and platform management being to oversee the infrastructure and platforms used by an organisation. Emphasis on the word oversee there. When it's carried out properly, and again, I'll, I'll emphasize the word properly there, this practice enables the monitoring and technology monitoring of technology solutions available to the organization. Now, this is the really important bit for me, including the technology of external service providers. So when we talk about infrastructure, think along the lines of it's a collection, it's a group, it's a set of information technology components that are the core, they're the basic, it's the foundation of an IT service. Typically physical components, but also can be um, virtual components and uh, software components and network components. IT infrastructure, as I say, can be physical items or it can be virtual in terms of virtual technologies, virtual machines, for example. So when we, when we think of what is IT infrastructure, think compute, think data centers, facilities, servers, storage devices, networks, and the networking equipment that goes with them, cables, routers, switches. You've got client hardware in there, you've got virtual machines, middleware, OS, all of these are, are, are in the IT infrastructure mix. Don't forget, when we talk about a service, a service isn't an island. So when we talk about an IT service, that includes lots of other things. It includes the application, it includes the infrastructure. So don't always just sort of think as a service just being on its own. It's supported by lots of different things, including infrastructure and, and platforms. It also includes any CIs a, a customer may use in order to access the service or, or uh, consume uh, whatever that service or product is. Operating models, when it comes to IT infrastructure, they can be outsourced, it can be insourced, it can be a combination of, of, of the two. You can perhaps have a service integrator there as well, managing all, all of that for you, or a, or a service provider or another external supplier. Infrastructure and platform management may also include buildings and facilities. And certainly I can think back to three or four recent assignments I've been involved in where infrastructure also includes CCTV, UPS, power, air conditioning units, not just from the IT perspective, but also from a, from a building perspective as well. So, so go wide when, when you think around infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure and platform management includes the provision of technology to support and create value to your organisation. Value, that should always make you think about the service value system and the service value chain. Think around, are you creating value? It also involves new technology as well. So as, as things change, new technologies, new ideas come along, um, a sort of a more mobile workforce, for example, artificial intelligence, robotics, etc. 
all of these things are, are need to be you need to be ready to adopt those, those technology there is a high level of orchestration here there's a lot of moving parts to make the the organization strategy for your infrastructure and, and platform uh, uh, work and you always need to make sure what is the outcome here what what are the organizational goals what what's the vision all right let's talk briefly around uh, cloud service models and and deployments when we talk about cloud in a nutshell i i always like to think it's it's an on-demand service it's a utility that that you are consuming so it, you're basically using a service but without worrying without having to bother about the management or the controlling of whatever that infrastructure is um, the, there's three cloud delivery models that um, you, you should be aware of software as a service abbreviated to SaaS, platform as a service PaaS, and infrastructure as a service IS so software as a service think along the lines of it's an application in the cloud that you can just use you don't need to worry you don't need to manage or you don't need to control the infrastructure the cloud infrastructure it's usually platform independent platform as a service so think along the lines of you are um, deploying onto the cloud acquired application and you're using a, a number of approaches to 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 uh, make that happen it libraries programming languages tools of various types services etc and again you're doing it without worrying or managing or having to uh, control the cloud infrastructure that the uh, platform as a service is good for development and testing and organization of, of applications it's really good for software development infrastructure as a service think compute so think along the lines of its compute power its networking its storage its server and again without having to worry about the management the control of the underlying infrastructure good pros here for example maybe around flexing up or dynamic uh, expansion of, of resources so you may have uh, the ability to during periods of peak activity if the infrastructure starts to stretch and and um, uh, sort of creak a bit if you like you can um, ha have the ability for you know for that to be automatically flexed up without without worrying in in the old world you may go oh you know the infrastructure is struggling because it's really busy at the moment in in a cloud model you you can apply a level of of flex just slide aside on that if it's multi-tenanted you may there may be some security considerations or <coughs> some governance or compliance type activities that you may need to to just think through as to how does that operate and I say that having worked in a regulatory environment where we needed to um, segment and, and separate some of the, the infrastructure as a service items. If we, if we then just kind of think very brief, briefly through the um, other interfaces, other practices that are going to be involved in the infrastructure and platform practice. So as a reminder, you've got general management practices, there's 14 practices in there, you've got service management practices, there's 17 in there, and we're currently on the series of doing technical management practices, there's just the, the three in there. But if, if, if you just think through for a second, other practices that are going to be touching infrastructure and platform management. So there's the financial, the service financial management element and that's from the uh, general management practice consider that the model of, of cloud has kind of moved away from the capex model from the capital expenditure model and it's now in the opex the the operational expenditure so opex is pref is, is preferred over capex um because you're, you're con it's being consumed as a, as a utility and it comes out of an, out of an ops uh, budget. So there may be an element of cost model adjustment in there, I suppose is, is what I'm saying. But again, service management uh, um, and general management practices 
there's going to be uh, interfaces with, with other elements. And service financial is, is from the general management practice. Supplier management, again, think through. So this is from the general management practice. Think through about uh, how are you going to be onboarding um, and selecting these suppliers is there is that you may well be working in a regulatory env environment or a highly secure environment where immediately you're going to say we need to think about regulatory compliance we need to think about data protection we need to think about IT security um, we need due diligence activities here absolutely but again the point here really is infrastructure and platform management is going to be interfacing into other practices supplier management as an example capacity and performance man management again think through okay so so this is going to uh, the, the, there may be a cost element to this but perhaps there's also a technical element to it that says when it reaches a particular threshold or a warning of some kind a what are we going to do about it so clearly if it's a security element that that's a different um, uh, tack but if it's a capacity issue or a performance issue do we want to think about some kind of clever uh, flexing model that says yes we know the system always get gets busy at um i don't know q1 or you know a particular month or the end of month when payroll's running or uh, uh, i don't know september when renewals are running wh whatever it may be think through some of those capacity and performance management elements that if there is a threshold met a is there a cost implication there but b from a service perspective do you want capacity to just suddenly increase or, or flex up or, or perhaps flex down change control so this is something that you really need to think through so this is from the service management practice change control it's not unusual in a cloud model for changes to happen almost without you being aware there's no approval there's no cab involvement there so how's that going to work in terms of if you've got a governing board if you've got a cab board um are, the, are any of these updates perhaps going to be classified as standard changes as opposed to normal changes i don't really have the answer here but it, it's just to to make the point around as an interface you've got change control there from the service management practice and um how's that going to going to operate with your um infrastructure and your platform management when it comes to governance boards and then incident management as well so the, there's going to be elements as to yeah we can fix this in um, in-house with our own team or no this is actually in the cloud we, we need a third party or the cloud provider to to fix something fine but my experience here is you must avoid the situation where you start pointing fingers where you say okay well you know this is a this is a cloud issue or or you know an another provider from a customer perspective they don't care it's not working you need to fix it so do take that holistic do take that end-to-end -end thinking um both strategically tactically and operationally but from a customer service perspective they don't care where the issue is they care that they can't operate they can't work they can't deliver value so um it's really important just to make sure you don't end up in a situation where you where you start um excusing performance and saying it, it's it's the cloud provider so what he needs to fix it if we focus briefly now as, as we come to the end around the service value chain reminder service value chain right in the middle of the service value system service value system you've got guiding principles you've got governance You've got that service value chain practices 34 practices and then you've got the continual improvement all delivering value from a service value chain perspective there are activities in there that will um, deliver a product or a service and, and again that will run on into in, into delivering that value from infrastructure and platform management the design and transition and the obtain and build are um, activities where where um, uh, the, there's a lot of emphasis there's a lot of activity in those design and transitions and the update obtain and build sections 
it's involved in all activities, but those two areas are, are, are of particular note. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Please subscribe and I'll continue to post videos. Thank you.